last night under a half-baked plan to run a triathlon, <laughs> a select group of nerds, analysts, and Brock Purdy haters fought yes. and toiled and burned the midnight oil to deliver the best segment in all of sports. Now, if you want your power rankings, head down to the local Radisson near the breakfast bar. Pick up a USA Today, you can look at the power rankings. That's not what this is. Right now, it's an honor and a privilege to introduce Nick's Tears. Kevin Wilde, thank you for the wonderful introduction as always. I appreciate it. Uh, I don't appreciate the nerds comment. I don't know who you're talking about. Certainly not. Were there Marshall not nerds there? Walker. No. Honestly, no. if there's not nerds there, I'm moving this uh, <laughs> tears down. Well, it was really the tone with which you say it wasn't. You, I'm no fan of nerds, but okay. I do respect okay. their work. All right. Uh, well, well done, sir. I appreciate it. It is really a privilege. It was a privilege to host the committee last night at the house. I was a little late for today's morning meeting yeah. because I had to rustle one of the committee members out of our guest bedroom because he had, had drank a little too much and slept over it. So, but it is a 12, 11 level tier, I think, oh. tiers, because no one's been eliminated. So let's get right to it on the very bottom and on the clock. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I'll be shocked if any of these four ever move up. This ever? season. This season. Oh, I'll take yeah. that bet. I, I, yeah. Really? Which, yeah. Who are you betting on moving really? up? Really? Somebody. Who are you, who are you, who are you have betting to be on the moving up? Frisky, Frisky Patriots. Okay. All right. You, the drive for five. All right. That sounds bad being on the clock. Next year, worse than on the clock. <laughs> These are fan bases that have oddly weird hopes surrounding their team this year. The Saints think their 32 year old average age on defense, this is the year it's going to come through. And I like Cam Jordan as much as the next guy. Demario Davis is great, but no, it's not going to happen. The Browns would, listen, if they were playing, they're one of the original teams basically. If they were playing back pre forward pass, maybe that could be a great <laughs> yeah. team, but unfortunately not for them. And Titans fans, real chirpy on social media, like put respect on Will Levis. Hey, face. something. I won't actually. Kick no, off um, season. Yeah. All right. We're just here for the quarterbacks. How's Nick's going to be? How's Daniel's going to be? How's Anthony Richardson going to be? And this is a sad one for the Vikings because that's the spot they were in. But now J.J. McCarthy is going to miss the year. But it, these seasons were just about, do we have the guy at quarterback? The Vikings, it's kind of a season that's just kind of stuck in neutral. Can you, Wilds, can you smell that? Can you? That's a whiff of friskiness. Oh. oh. Proud quarterbacks. Let's go Defensive-minded head coaches. G great wide receivers. All three of them. All, check, check, check across the board for all three quarterbacks. At least one, maybe two of these teams will crash the NFC playoff party. I don't think all three will, and I can't. Listen, I went with the Bucs, but if somebody said it was Seattle, I'd buy it. And, I, and the Cardinals have been kind of a trendy pick yeah. to go wor not Hold necessarily up. worse than Wilds Wild is two years early on. That was gutsy. Um, and so <laughs> just a whiff of frizz. I like the I like the quarterbacks. I like the I like the fact that the quarterbacks kind of have a chip on their shoulder, all of them. Yeah. Defensive minded head wide coach. Wide receiver one. Star, right, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Star wide receivers for all of them. Uh, Whistling past the graveyards. Oh. Let's all just pretend everything's fine. We're the Pittsburgh Steelers. We've had a bottom 10 offense five years in a row. Don't worry. Russell Wilson and Justin Fields will fix it. Yeah, everything will be good. Uh, we're the Philadelphia Eagles. We had arguably the single worst collapse in the history of the National Football League for a good team. But don't worry, it's going to be fixed because two guys who didn't last 12 months at their previous spots are our new coordinators mm. and our coach and quarterback haven't yet come to physical blows. It'll be fine. Uh, but we're the New York Jets. We're the worst franchise, arguably, in modern NFL history. The guy who's supposed to save it skipped our mandatory mini camp when he wasn't considering running for vice president. Our head coach is obviously in a bit over his head. And our offensive coordinator, nobody wants, including us. We tried to replace him, but we couldn't effectively do that. But don't worry, it'll all be fine. They'll have their moments. I, all three of these teams will have games or even week, weeks on end where they look awesome. Where it's like the Dolphins are doing backflips into the end zone, scoring Back 100 spins, points. Actually. Okay, well, yeah, that's a great <laughs> right, dancing right. term. Well done, Wilds. Tyreek's more of a backflip <laughs> gotcha. guy, but yeah, yeah. Where, where Jordan Love is crushing for the Packers, and where the oh, Chargers yeah. 
are just running the ball 47 times and oh, Jim coach. Harbaugh looks like he is, you know, he has ascended <laughs> to a higher plane. Um, I don't think any of these are double digit win teams, but I think they all are going to lay a very uh, I, the Packers and Chargers are going to lay a very solid foundation moving forward. I think the Packers are a little overvalued. The Dolphins, I think they are basically who they've been, which is they're going to be fun at moments, but not a real contender. All right, you know what they say. PBOB. Oh, I'm sorry, wait. Yeah, this is right. PBOB. Bro, what's that stand for? PBOB. Playoff. No idea. Okay, playoff birth or bust. Ah. All four of these Bob. teams... It, it, there is a, a baseline expectation of at a bare minimum making the playoffs. For three of the four, if they don't, I think they would be looking for a new head coach. The Falcons, I'm not going to put that on Raheem Morris, but I do think they very clearly think we're making the playoffs, we're winning that division. If they don't, I don't think he'd get fired, but the other three I think would. I don't look at any of the four as championship contenders. But expecting them all to make the playoffs at a bare minimum, I think, is very fair. It's not last year. How many silly, wow. facile power rankings am I going to have to see where the top four teams for 2024 are miraculously the final four teams of 2023? How many times am I going to have to see te people who picked Baltimore to win the Super Bowl before the playoffs this year pick Baltimore to win the Super Bowl this year because they want a do-over. Uh, How many times am I going to have to see <laughs> everyone act like the Niners, uh, let's just call it off-season of a bit of tumult when it comes to Brock Purdy, who got a D and then somehow got a little, you know, went and knocked on the teacher's office like, I'm sorry, my parents are going to be mad at me. Can you up the grade? And Brew was like, no problem. And now it's a C. Or the Ravens losing offensive linemen, defensive coordinator, Ooh, defensive makes. playmakers. Next. Number one pick pedigree, Burrow, Stafford, uh, Caleb, excellent defenses, excellent weapons. That uh, Wilds looks perplexed, but I hope I didn't screw anything keep up. Going. Uh, I I love all three of these quarterbacks. I think you have one of the mo two of the most physically gifted quarterbacks and one of just the best quarterback at quarterbacking in football on this bar. I like all three of their defenses. I like the weapons on all these teams. Hard not to love, it's Coach's Super Bowl, the Lions and the Texans. It's really hard to find a glaring weakness for either of these teams, to be honest with you. I love the Lions roster top to bottom. I love their schedule of being indoors basically the whole season but three weeks. A golf is, seems happy and confident. Dan Campbell has that team motivated. And for the Texans, aside from the fact that I think they're going to struggle a bit running the ball and stopping the run, but you know I don't really care about that stuff. Yeah, um, I think they're going to be outstanding. And then, of course, at the very top, the Lombardi and Star tier. Because as Brew mentioned earlier, there has been a three-peat in the NFL before. It was done by Vince Lombardi and Bart Starr right around 60 years ago. Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid trying to recreate that this year. That is the week one edition coach of the committee's tiers. It was, I, I love the names that you associate with the tiers. I think that's the strongest As thing always, that the, that's that the martial or English is, is able to put together. I do see that there was a lot of drinking last night, so that's pretty <laughs> obvious. It, it, there's, the there's a lot of problems that I have, but, and I'll, I'll just stick to the main one. I understand it's not last year w with the 49ers, and I understand how much you hate Brock Hardy. I don't hate okay. anyone. How, mu how much you don't believe in Brock Purdy, and, yeah. and I understand that. But here's here's where it is last year for the San Francisco 49ers, is they got they have all their stars back, okay, and they're loaded with stars across the board, and and similar to Kansas City, I don't I didn't see Kansas City's offseason exactly being the smoothest offseason in the world, and I understand there was there was contract disputes in San Francisco, but but they're all taken care of now, and all the stars are in play, and 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 that group hasn't there hasn't been a significant drop off anywhere on the roster so to say that they shouldn't be up there in that in that Houston uh, Detroit, Detroit tier. tier to me is is unfair because they are as loaded as they were last season well listen I might have had them on par with Detroit but I see a guy like coach Mangini picked Detroit to be head and shoulders better than them a guy yeah, it, it, it doesn't uh, mean that they don't have the, to beat someone <laughs> to get in there the, they could, they could still be on that same tier. The, that, no, that's fair. Listen, I think that there is a real – I think the Super Bowl hangover 
is a very real thing. I, I, agree. I And I think that that is something we've talked about quite a bit on this mm -hmm. show in particular. I think a Super Bowl hangover when it's been kind of five straight years of hangover uh. can be even harder to overcome. And yes, I do. I do th you are correct. You're not correct in that. I hate the guy. You are correct in that for most other teams with the Niners kind of abstract, I would believe in more because it's like, well, the young quarterback is only going to go like this. I believe last year will go down as the single greatest year of Brock Purdy's career. So I think if they go backwards a bit in the in quarterback play, I think that the team got incredibly, I don't want to say lucky, but a team that it has players with pretty tattered injury histories stayed healthy sure. through the, the bulk of last season and in a tougher division. And what I think this year is a tougher NFC, I just don't see them as the cream of the crop of the conference. One team that will not have to worry about the Super Bowl hangover, the Baltimore Ravens. I could go Green Bay. I could go Philadelphia, like Coach said. A lot of issues with this list, the Jets. But Baltimore last year, and we, it's not last year, but we go off of what happened last year. Or do we? All right? Yes, well, we do. And, and projections, they added, only added one of the best running backs in this generation, or maybe the best running back this generation. So last year, I would say they were the second best team in the league. I think some people think they, they were the best crushed, team and just yeah, had a bad I, I, you day. You can say that, but look, Kansas City beat sure. them, but they crushed the other Super Bowl team, the, yeah. the Niners. So I go their second best. In fact, the six teams ahead of them, outside of the Chiefs, they beat, or five of the six they beat. They beat Detroit by 34 points. They beat Houston twice by an average of 20 points. Mm. Cincinnati, they beat them twice. We know Burrow wasn't there for the second game. But they own Cincinnati, as I've said. Lamar 4-1 against Joe Burrow. They beat the Rams, six points. And then San Francisco, of course, 14 points. So, I, look, and then they add Derrick Henry. That, good. that he is, again, like Saquon Barkley, he's been the focal point of the opposing defense for the last few years and still, two years ago, got 1,500 yards. I think he's going to have a great season. I think defenses are going to really have a hard time stopping them because of all that Lamar can do. Now you got to worry about Derrick Henry. And defensively, I know, Nick, you keep beating the drum that Mike McDonald's gone. Yeah. Guess what? What they do is defend in Baltimore. John Harbaugh, that is who he is. That is their culture. No matter who is the offensive coordinator, Defense. Dean Pease, defensive coordinator, Wink Martindale, yeah. They were in the top ten defensively five of the six years before uh, McDaniel took M McDonald took over. They were in the top five three of the four years before he took over. They're going to be fine defensively because that's their culture. Let me, so let me they should be much higher. Quickly dissect Bruce's entire argument. I'll go in reverse order. First of all, I think defensive coordinators matter. I'm sorry if others on this de desk don't. I think they're a wildly valuable. A lot of people don't valuable. think coaches matter. I, you know what? I know, and I find that hurtful. And I, I think particularly of all the coaches, I think defensive coordinators. Well, they still have a be, that's defensive their coordinator I, is the From inside. I, I get that, but that, okay, I, I, again, exactly. I, you're right. He's I've said it all McDonald. summer, but I will say it again. We, we could have said something similar about Philadelphia's offense is rolls all the time. Doesn't matter if it's Carson Wentz or it's Nick Foles or Jalen Hurts and Shane Steichen left and the train fell apart. We see the, the the import of coordinators all the time. One of the reasons people are so high on the Lions is they retained Ben Johnson. Sure. It's, people are so high on the Texans. They retained Bobby Slowick. I guarantee you, had the Chiefs lost Steve Spagnolo. People will be a little concerned about that defense. So I thought a defense last year that was not projected by many to be as dominant as it was, to, and then the credit went to the defensive coordinator, him leaving matters. Also, so let's take that aside. Brew's other two arguments, I think, drew, came down to two things. One is a lot of things that happened last season, this is the 2024 tiers, and they added a 30-year-old running back. I'm not really into the old running backs. I think that the, I think that the Baltimore Ravens, Weaknesses last year were not. They can't run the ball. So I don't think they're going to get as much punch from Derrick Henry as other teams would. And I do think that they are, that this is a new season. And yes, if we were to do last year's tears, bro, I agree with you. They would have a strong argument for the silver medal. But that's not what this is. 
Okay. You know what, Coach? I try to live by uh, your motto of you don't need to put out another person's uh, candle to make yours burn brighter. So usually I like to take a team and want to move them up. I'm making an exception. Bengals, no. Nah. Too high. Too high for the Bengals. First of all, you're playing the Patriots. I'll give you the win against the Patriots. Then you're playing the Chiefs yeah. when the Chiefs have extra rest. So best case scenario, I think you start one and one. Also, so that would also then be the worst case scenario. It's the only scenario. Best case, sure. Best case. <laughs> the, I mean, the, I mean, the, your you're only scenario is start one and one. Yeah, it's all the scenario. You could start zero yeah. and two. Sorry, go ahead. You could start two and zero. Oh. Regardless. <laughs> I think the Bengals are too high. They historically start very slow. So I don't see any reason why all of a sudden, hey, I know they start slow for the last three years, but this is the year they're going to come out of the gate super fast when they have to play the Chiefs in week two when the Chiefs rest. Then what about their offense? Well, they had a bunch of losses in offense. Tyler Boyd's not there. Joe Mixon's not there. Jonah Williams not there. And I know it's like, well, Wilds, did you see uh, social media today? Jamar Chase had his helmet on at practice. Well, that's fantastic. Unfortunately, he got a game on Sunday. Do I think Jamar Chase is going to be 100%? No. Do I think he's going to be 85%? No. no. I don't know what percent he's going to be, but Greg 85. Jennings told me it's not as you're not going to get peak <laughs> uh, Jamar. Finally, when I when I gave you a scowl like this, I was like, huh? You're like, ah, great defense. And you put the Bengals in there. Not necessarily. And I know this year is a brand new year, but last year, this team was not even anywhere close to a good defense. They were giving up long bombs. Remember, you could just throw it over the top. 100%. Here's the other weird thing, and no one is talking about this. Joe Burrow's wrist. Now, Joe Burrow's wrist is like buying a flooded car. Like, no, it's all good. You're like, okay, if you're saying it's all good. But if something pops up weird, like, oh yeah, that wrist injury that no one's talking about. Here's. Uh, from the Action Network. The specific injury he suffered was a tear of, remember that? The yeah. uh, ligament that we'd never heard of. Yeah. Almost, I was like, did they invent that ligament? <laughs> that injury has never been documented for a quarterback, and there could be some concerns yeah. long term. We saw a little bit in the preseason. Sure, a little bit in the preseason is different than throwing 40 passes against the Woeful Patriots. People probably need to run the ball. Or at 40 passes against the Chiefs, 35 yeah. passes. We only see him throw the ball less than 10 times in the whole preseason. He says he's good. I'm just not 100% convinced that the wrist is good. And because of that, with the slow start, and you got the Chiefs there uh, hovering in a bad defense, I would drop Cincinnati down. Okay, so a couple things. But you want to drop them down to move Miami up. Yeah, and you know, Dusty big... wanted me. No, Dusty I got wanted it. me to have something sexy on there. No, that's like, fine. But yeah, the Dolphins are your Super Bowl pick. I get it. And, I, the, and one of your big concerns with the Bengals is the long-term health of their quarterback. And we're going to move the what? Dolphins up. Uh, Can we stop? No. Tua played every game, did he not? I'll do it again. I'll go to war on this. Yeah. He played every game. He did. So you can't say, oh, injury. The guy played every game. So if you want to do this last year where it's like, hey, he went in, he's a big injury risk, well, he played every game. Yeah, he did. Okay. One so you're like, well, now time. I'm going to be okay. right. The same thing you accuse exactly. everyone no. else of doing, like, man, I want to do over on this. Tua is going to be injured. He played every game. Okay, so uh, can I ask you a question? He was doing jujitsu balls. Hold on. Can I just ask you a question? Yeah. I'd like to see if I can switch sports for a moment. Is Anthony Davis an injury risk? I'm not. I, I, t t ask me in December. No, 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 I, no. I mean, we, we literally. No, we, I, real talk. I felt that we were unfairly maligning Anthony Davis when he busted his tail and played through injuries and played the whole year. And I think it's a lazy take to say Anthony Davis always hurts. No, I always hurt. I agree with. But I think I think that in life and in sports, if someone in four of six years has been something, just because one or one of the two they haven't been is the most recent one, we shouldn't then say, well, that's solved forever. Like, I, but I, if it's on the path to being solved, I, wouldn't no, 17 I, consecutive I, I, games I, or 18 I consecutive think, games? I think that Tua is an, in, I think that when, if I'm talking injury risks at quarterback, in the highest category is Joe Burrow and Tua. They're both there. Now, you can say that's unfair to Tua. I don't think it's unfair. Now, if Tua is fully healthy this year, now we're two years removed, that's fine. But the other, the, the, the point you made that I thought was a cogent one about Cincinnati was last year their defense stunk. That is, again, where I am going to go for kind of 
the breadth of, ex of experience with them with Lou Anarumo, which is that is a it's the opposite of what the Bills defenses have been over the last five years, which is the Bills defense has always been here in the regular season. And then in the playoffs, you play these superstar quarterbacks and your defense gets yeah. exposed. The Bengals defense has been basically last year, notwithstanding league average in the regular season. And then come the playoffs, they really up their game. So you're right. They do that, like heat up. It, it, or they're just better in, you know what I mean, in particular spots. So I agree with you. I don't think they have a superstar laden defense, but I think the defense scares people. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get more from the show and to check out clips from other shows on FS1.